Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Travelers Season 1, Episode 7. It's called Protocol 5. Full spoilers for the episode as always. I don't want to pack ourselves in the back too much. But we nailed exactly what this episode was going to be. <laughs> we did say, and you know, I'm, I'm getting this as close to my original wording as I can remember. The next episode with them try to resume their normal lives of these people... And at the end of the episode, they'll actually get a message and realise, oh crap, no, there is more missions to do. Yep. That is what this episode was. Had we thrown in, oh by the way, there'll be some hallucinations as well, we would have nailed it, oh, yeah, beat yeah. for beat. I felt like that one was a little bit more unguessable, because that, that wasn't really set up. Oh no, of course not. And the thing was as well, the first time, I think it was the first one, uh, was when... Uh, Carla sees on the TV the questions again I was like oh is that what the plot's going to be now that there's this opposing force that are going to hunt them because they know about them and they want to know more and then you know maybe we'll get to like future threats again in season 2 you know but the rest of season 1 will be this you know enemy yeah. um, but then that turned out it, it, it might still end up being something to do with it, that it could be yeah I, well I'll be surprised if we don't hear from them again at some point yeah me season. too yeah, I, even if it's just one episode, maybe like a couple before the end, we'll, you know, it'll be like a more of a season two setup kind of thing. Yeah. But I expect to hear from them again. It'd be weird if we only get that one episode in the middle. Mm. But now, nah, so this episode followed the, the all of our sort of main five characters try to live out normal lives. Protocol five, of course, which is the name of the episode, dictates that you know until they have other missions to do, they live out their lives as the people have taken over as normal. Uh, which it's also also means and implies that they shouldn't even contact each other, which they kind of end up doing at the end anyway. At least a couple of them do. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a weird. I don't think it's necessarily that it implies that they shouldn't. It's just that why would your person meet yeah, this yeah. person? So it's it's kind of like an unwritten. Yeah, yeah. It's like, unless there's a good reason why these two people would run into each other, maybe don't. Yeah. I mean, I see no reason, because I mean, they were going to be dead anyway, so I see no reason why you can't change their, like, course naturally, you know, like, yeah. if eventually McLaren decided to, like, divorce his wife, and, oh, look at that, I've ran to this nice young woman named Carly at a coffee shop, oh, well, I guess I'll ask her on a date now, you know, like, what, yeah. why can't you just course correct like that into your own, your own way, but, yeah, so we followed up. All of them pretty much individually doing their own thing for the episode, and they all have their own little mini plots. The only sort of connective thread between them is that they all have moments of hallucination where they hear some voices. Maybe they, you know, Carly's more paranoid, thinking that the people who kidnapped them are, has come back. Uh, McLaren has visions of what I guess is the real Carly, or what she looked like in the future. That, that's what I took it to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and even just other random people he sees, like when he's talking to the crowd at his uh, surprise party, has a. Uh, was it 15th anniversary that he's been working at the FBI? Yeah. And he, he sees, like, some other people from the future, in the, you know, in yeah. the crowd. It's like when he holds up the, the shirt and he, he sees, like, Helios. Helios. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I it's a funny, it's a really weird episode to talk about. I think there's a lot of little, little cool things, but obviously you're never going to be as excited about an episode like this because it is very much the fallout of the previous one and it's yeah. a lot of small character beats. By its very nature, it is designed to take a break. Yeah, it's a breather. It's like, all right, the last week was very tense, lots of big things happening. The world was literally at stake. Yeah. This week, you know, um, maybe Trevor deals with the fact that his friends are crappy and want to steal from uh, shops. And, you know, maybe his girlfriend isn't so awful yeah. as she initially seemed to be, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, Carly's being paranoid that was basically carly's whole thing she was paranoid and the uh the social services women came around child support it was like yeah and, and that did not go well yeah it did not go well yeah definitely her and to an extent mclaren's were probably the least interesting maybe because mclaren's was kind of setting up the whole wife jealousy i think he's cheating angle. yeah the, the, the moment that really kind of drew like drove that home was the phone it was like oh do we yeah. have to go through this when she texts her mum at the end yeah no i yeah. Yeah, it, at the same time, though, it's spent so little time on it that it's like, yeah, fine. I get it. Yeah, like I say, it, it is just one subplot and it's not fine and I can live with it. But and I'm never going to be excited about it either. And at least the other stuff with him, seeing the real Carly, you know, when he's hallucinating, was actually really yeah. interesting. It was to see what people look like in the future. Mm. Um, makes me wonder what he looked like in the future. What did they all look like in the future? Did any of them swap genders? We've not heard, they've not confirmed that anyone swapped a gender yet, but theoretically. 
I mean, I assume they could. Maybe they don't, just so they'd be more comfortable. Yeah, because they're being used who to. They are. Yeah. yeah. I once thought I even pondered the idea: what if they swap genders? Like, what if both of them? Like, what if in the future, McLaren was the woman and Carl yeah, was the man? Right, yeah. I know it doesn't seem like that's the case, but I, I I pondered it briefly, and I was like, it could have been, you know. Yeah, that's the thing. There's nothing to say anyone hasn't. I think the assumption is just they're the gender that we see them as, just because that's what they're comfortable as, and you know, that's just. No, yeah, comfortable, but also just practical. Like, if you're yeah. used to being a man or used to being a woman, you know how to do all the things that are associated with being that. Whereas, yeah. if a man suddenly became a woman, there's all this... You know, you can almost make a comedy out of it. Oh, no, it's the time of the month. What do I do? Uh, yeah. And, you know, women like, oh, my God, standing up to pee. What is this shenanigans? Kind of, you know, like... Uh, it sounds really silly to talk about, but it's, it's, like, it's just something you get to skip if you just go into the same... Yeah, and instead gender. we can have them be surprised over food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, Philip not appreciating that uh, food quite. Yeah, his plot is that he he goes to uh, a support group mm. uh, for people with addictions. Uh, nothing in particular. I think that, I think the implication is they all have different addiction addictions rather than yeah. you know it's not like Alcoholics Anonymous where they're all alcoholics. This is you know he's on heroin, he's addicted to gambling, he's addicted to whatever. I really liked his like um, his vision bit. You know, like, uh, during that where it was as if they were all travellers. Mm, yeah, and I, like, lo- I love the idea of a support group for travellers where like hang on we complete our mission what what do we do now how do we move on with lives this this isn't us I love the idea that there should be a support group for that yeah I, I think what's interesting to me is that once again I think when they all split up Marcy seems to be the one who tends to get the best little story or at least the, the best moments because I think because obviously her plot in this one is she decides to do a sort of small operation on herself to try and help with her seizures. I, I think she has like some future technology or something. That yeah, she's like a, a nerve st- stimulant yeah. or something. I don't know. So we, that... Yeah, we, we see her going to the, the, the bath and she like, you know, cuts into her neck a little bit and cuts into her sort of like chest area. Yeah. And she like inserts these things. And when David comes in, he sees this and he's like shocked and horrified. This is not normal to do this to yourself. What I thought was really genius in terms of the filmmaking here is that there was the one shot before he comes in, it was sort of like a high up shot looking down at her, and you could just see how much blood was like all over the, the bathtub. All over the bath, yeah. And it was a really good thing, because even though we know she's like a doctor, and we know, we know that she knows what she's doing, seeing that image of just all of her own blood surrounded in the bathtub made it feel crazy. So when he yeah. walked in, and was like, this is insane, that, that normal people don't do this, you kind of, on his side, you're like, no, he's right. This is yeah, and weird. she's like, oh, it's just a little bit of blood. He's like, this is more than a little bit of blood. It's everywhere. <laughs> and it's not like he's mad about the mess. He's like, no, this is dangerous. Yeah. This is surreal. People don't do this to themselves. Yeah. Uh, but he also had maybe the funniest line in the uh, the entire... Because obviously she kisses him to make him shut up. And he's like, you can't just kiss me every time to uh, get me to stop talking. But it's like, I'll do anything for you. Just no surgery. Maybe a little bit of surgery. Band-Aids. I can do band-aids. It was the line I can do band-aids that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but no. I think that, like, you know, you said, oh, she gets the best stuff on her own. I think it's because David has been the one that's built up most as a character uh, in the, su- the supporting light. Because obviously, Philip has Ray, who's got something, but he's not very three-dimensional still. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the relationship's just the best because there is this sort of confusing mix of like feelings and... Yeah, yeah, they I have think, chemistry as well, and it, uh, I, I think it's there's a reason why they showed us this pair first, and you know it's clear that they're the pair they want us to focus on. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So, uh, no, so that was pretty much it. They all they all did their own things. They're they're all kind of like struggling and coping with you know Trevor's like having a fight with his dad based on stuff that he didn't really do, but like Trevor before he got there did and other things like that causing conflict. Bloody Gary. Yeah, bloody Gary. Can't keep his mouth shut, can he? Yeah. That has to always be throwing his weight around. But, uh, nah, that, that was pretty much it. And at the end, of course, Philip gets the uh, the message on the computer saying, oh, we've got another mission. And that was kind of our... Do you know what? That, that, I like that maybe that implies that they didn't fix anything because the director's still there. So did so did it not work? Or did it work and just other stuff's gone wrong? Or what? I feel like it's the latter, but I mean, of course, next episode they might just immediately say that it's one or the other, so I don't even want to speculate. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Just, I feel like it could be anything almost, or, yeah. you know... Uh, but either way, it's not fixed, because the director's still there. Yeah, there's, there's more to do. 
And of course yeah. there was more to do. It's halfway through season one. We're not done yet. <laughs> well, I, I considered that maybe they just kind of feel like they needed to do more on a personal level. So they just take the initiative in their own hands and do their own thing mm. without orders from the director. If it had like solved it, perhaps. and But they'd be like, no, forget the protocols. We can help. But clearly not. I can see them going that route eventually. Yeah. I, but I think it is too soon to completely abandon the... Like yeah, me- yeah. you know, messages, missions from the future from the director. I feel like, you know, seven episodes into season one is that when you give that up? Not really. Yeah. Like, you, you can do that. I think after two seasons, where you completely shake up the the premise of the show. Yeah. Plus, but, I really want to learn more about the director, so I'm glad that that's sticking around. Who is the director? Yeah. W- what are <laughs> they? What 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 is the purpose? I really want to know. And why? Like, and is the director the oldest? We spoke about in the last uh, video how they're old because they keep going back and they can live for a long time. Is the director the oldest? Is, uh, if they did like did he invent the techn- like, did they invent mm. the technology maybe? Like what what's given them the right to be in charge and overseeing all this? And is he secretly the bad guy? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put it past it. It kind of feels like one of those obvious swerves, yeah. doesn't it? it? It feels like the obvious place to go that the director's secretly not the good guy. Yeah. And the team are eventually going to have to go rogue to actually save the world because everything the director's doing is actually for the worse, uh, you know. Yeah, it feels like an obvious one to go with, and I'm okay with that because it's always yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I won't complain if to go that route because uh, it feels kind of natural. But yeah, no, no, I, I enjoyed the episode. It's just a really hard one to be like, oh, this is exciting. You know, it was, yeah. it was all these little things for each character. It, it was, it was solid, is what it was. I think it was important though. I, I think you know, going into the next mission. You know the next episode, but that is mainly action focused. We, we'll we'll care a little bit more about all of them. They're all in different places, you know. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing with always these episodes. It's like, yeah, they're never that exciting in the moment, but they tend to pay off later down the line, and they're, they're always important for going forward. And when you're watching it in a Netflix model, where you're watching them one after the other, it really doesn't matter. Exactly. You actually enjoy the breather because you just see it as like part of the overall thing. This is a type of episode where, on a week to week basis, it can be a little bit more frustrating. Yeah, because you feel like you've perhaps wasted a week. But in this scenario, it, it works completely fine. Yeah. So, now uh, that's episode seven of Travelers. Uh, let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. We'll be back with more reviews tomorrow. So, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.